So I'm supposed to introduce myself. Yep. Well, my name is Ty. I only use one name because I'm ugly enough to get away with it. <laughs> All right? <laughs> now, the fly I'm going to tie is a modified Patriot. Everybody has been telling you tonight about flies that match the hatch and really work well. Well, when there's no hatch and the trout are not cooperating and you're throwing everything you've got in your fly box, then try the Patriot. It doesn't match anything that's alive. All right? It's strictly an attractive fly. And if you take a look at it, you can see that there is uh, foil, and then red floss, more foil, and then the white wings and a, t a brown or, or ginger hackle. All right? Now, you can tie this on any size from 10 to 20 because it's not matching the size of any fly or anything that's been alive. So it's strictly up to you. You can use a straight hook, uh, eye hook the way I am now. This is a 1X14 fly, a, a hook uh, by uh, Mustad, but <coughs> Tiamco or Almost any of the uh, good hook makers, uh, in whatever size you decide, all right? Try them. They work beautifully. The streams like the Conaquat, the Pequest, the Muskie, uh, and in fact, Harvey, are you out there? Uh, he uh, wasn't doing too well on the Conaquat. I gave him one, and he came back and he said, "By God, this thing works!" <laughs> <clears throat> so let's get started. The thread I'm using is flat nylon that's been pre-waxed. The reason I use it is it's extremely strong, and it does not break even when I tie flies, which is uh, pretty phenomenal. Because, there. And by the way, for tails uh, material where you want fairly stiff hackle, get yourself an inexpensive china neck. They're not very good for uh, anything else, but however, the hackle that you'll find on these large feathers is beautiful for tail materials. Stroke the fibers back a little bit so that they stand upright. Grab about a half inch worth, pull it off, then roll it in your fingers, and you have a very nice little bundle. The tail should be approximately the same size as the straight portion of the hook shank. Just tie it in and use the trick that my predecessor just told you about. Put a wrap of thread under the tail and pull it back. This tends to raise the tail and flare it out. If you take this hackle and you pull it up just a little bit and then lay your scissor on the hook shank, you'll cut it off and you usually cut it off at a taper. And that gives you a fairly nice flat body section right in there where I'm wrapping now. And it's pretty bloody smooth, particularly if you're working with um, quill bodies or uh, biots or something that's pretty slick. When you tie that in and then uh, tie them in and then wrap around the body, it has to be very smooth 
Otherwise, the bloody things will slip all over the place. Now, I'm bringing the thread forward to about oh, three quarters to or two thirds of the shank hook toward the eye. This is where I tie in the wings. For wing material, I use white hen net. They're inexpensive and they last bloody near forever. Take two feathers. Okay. Turn them off to about an inch to an inch and a half. That's much too large for the wing, but what you're going to see is you now take the wing material, get it even, and then stroke the hackles back until the wing size is the about what you want. There you go. Now, you notice these wing, that these feathers are concave and they flare out and they really imitate wings. Another hint is do not strip the hackle off the, the quill. Leave it on because when you slip the feathers up on either side of the hook and then grab them with your fingers and wrap them in. Looks sloppy, but all of this extra quill or extra hackle tends to anchor that quill onto the hook shank. Now you give it a haircut. Now if you want the wing to be wider spread, you can figure eight your thread in between the two feathers, like I'm doing now. Tie that down. Now wrap some uh, thread around behind the hook and bring it in. Okay, now you're ready for the body. I use silver holographic blue foil that's the thin. Tie that in. Bring it back to the tail section and just leave it there. Uh, you tie in the red floss and I use the fluorescent red. I think it stands out a little better. Tie that in. Bring the wrapping thread forward. Bring the red forward. And I just drop it over the front of the hook. Then three turns of the foil and you're ready for the fluorescent red. Now you bring that forward and wrap it or just drape it over the hook. Tie it down. But I want you to notice something. I've mutilated the bloody things beyond all description. But quite frankly, if you take and stroke them forward, they still stand up and hold up. And that's a testimony to the feather, not to me. <coughs> now you can get rid of some of this nonsense that they call bobbins. Now use your foil again, another three turns, turn off the foil, and now you're ready for the hackle. I use Cape Ginger Hackle, and the size 
They're very uniform, and one feather will probably give you four or five flies. Now, straighten out the hackle and take off about a quarter of an inch of the hackle, but leave the top hackle more than the bottom. You've got more of the bottom removed so that there's, it's kind of like a uh, shark fin. Now, bring the, the feather between the wings and tie it in, in front. I'm going to cut off some of this. Okay. Now, the reason that you take the hackle off the bottom of the quill is that when you start to wrap the feather around the shank of the hook, this helps stand upright and it starts things proper. Now I've wrapped four turns behind the feathers, the wings that is, and three turns in front. Tie it off. Trim it off, and now we can finish the fly. This is a handmade tool that I worked out. It's great for tying half, half hitches. That's it. There you go. Now, one thing, you noticed I really beat those wings to death, but take a look, they're still standing upright and they're still in position. That's one reason why I love these things. The uh, hen necks make beautiful wings, and you can get them in all different colors, so if you want to match the hatch, why you can. And in fact, if you really want to get outlandish, you can get some of the uh, necks that are two or three different shades of color on each feather. So there's one that I have that's a kind of a smoky gray, and it has a dark rim around the edge of the feather. And they make beautiful wings for fishing at night. All right. That's it.